What's up guys, welcome back to another episode with AB Investments. This is gonna be a very, very, very good episode for those that wanna know about what's gonna happen as far as, well, for AMC, some updates. That's very good. And for those of you who are thinking about the MEGL prospect for tomorrow, you have to watch this video and you also have to read the information I'll put for you down below in the description section uh, it's everything you need to know about MEGL and it's going to make you walk into tomorrow's play with a completely different understanding, either more on the bullish side and most importantly, more on the careful side. So with that being said, let's get started. So what do we have? AMC, what I'm seeing on the options chain, literally, it is most of the puts, most of the calls, especially on select strike prices have been wiped out as far as taken care of. Some were left for the possibility of the what if after the earnings. Um, so that's a bullish sign as far specifically the 19 and the $20 uh, strike price, even though most of the people that played those strike prices, as I see in my data, have already collected, uh, if not most of their profits have already gotten out. There's still a few, uh, I guess they're, looking at the potential of what it could go uh, go up to tomorrow. Uh, but I don't think they are risking anything because I think they have their profits. Now, as far as that's just for options. Um, you guys know my uh, position on day trading and whatever that nonsense with meme stocks. I don't do any of that as far as with the stocks. Uh, options, you would definitely have to know exactly what you're doing uh, you definitely have to be able to read the charts, technical analysis with the charts and the options chain in order for you to even play within the options realm if you choose to play in the options realm in other stocks or specifically in the meme stocks since they're heavily manipulated. Now, the one thing that raises my attention is that there is some, cons some weird and cryptic consolidation around the 15 and 14 dollars uh strike strike prices as far as for puts now it could be people that played those puts from a while ago going out on a limb gambling thinking that it can go this uh it potentially could go uh down that far from a long time ago however it could also be something cryptic that some people knew in the back of their head so we'll see what the earnings will do and, and if that checks out, then we knew that somebody knew something before they should have known it. Uh, if not, then the general picture right now is showing that everyone is anticipating the uh, earnings call to react to it afterwards. Now, BBIG has been halted since, what, 12 o'clock till well into the close. And the, and, and, and the crazy part is it said on the NYSC, website is said that it's under pending on the news they didn't announce the news which is more of a bullish thing honestly for me for them to halt it that long for something like this um i just hope that they're not gonna do no uh you know public offering or any of that stuff diluting the stock i don't see it being the case but it because that's the bear side the bullish side is that they couldn't allow it to go into the market so that now in the aftermarket, it could probably, if it's what I'm guessing to, that is going to do and what most of you are feeling is going to do, it's going to go crazy in the after hours uh, leading into tomorrow and then the after in the weekend now. And that could help them. Why? Because by the time, here's why the bullish side is more probable because if it takes a crazy rip in the after hours, then the market maker doesn't have to worry about the options chain tomorrow. So for all the newcomers coming in, I mean, imagine if they let it drop the news in the, in the market hours and then people had the chance to jump in with a lot of options for tomorrow, they will be paying almost nothing for these options and the op market maker will get screwed. So, but if they let it rip in the after hours, people can't have access to no options to buy then tomorrow, if they do want to buy options, they're going to be buying at a high premium, uh, basically according to what the estimate of the uh, 
stock is going to be depending on whatever if, if it whether it rips or not so we'll see keep your eye on that now down to the megl what you need to know is the information i will put in the description down below is going to be the financials of megl i'm also going to tell you what megl does and you need to if you're thinking about it tomorrow you need to watch this video you need to read that information in the description and you need to well you don't have to but you maybe could put your thoughts in the comment section hopefully you like the video uh, so you can push it out to more and more people and i don't know if you're watching this then i don't know why you still not subscribed if you're if you're not so with that being said what is megl now the good news for you i'll start it off with this is that megl is a financials company that does advisory roles and they specialize wait for it yeah you probably guessed it right they specialize in making sure they do the underwriting and helping companies go through the ipo process so they are the ones who know all about ipo process because they're the ones who do it for a living that's what their company is about and now they want to initiate their own now i want everybody to know once you see on weeble or td ameritrade or whatever the ipo initial offering days ahead they're telling you the prospect of four to five dollars you're not putting you're putting a dollar amount you're not buying x amount of stocks at that point you're just securing that much in the bank and in, in that in that if you put in that dollar amount on whatever it starts or initiates at that's what you will get on that day now here's the thing you need to know this ipos since they operate off of the hong kong market they're that they're not based there they're based in british columbia so they're an offshores company however they're operating in the hong kong and basically in the chinese market now one thing that is scary about it is that last year alone ipos in the hong kong market raised over 21 billion dollars in uh ipo uh funds now this year so far it's been about 2.1 2.5 billion so that's a big 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 downturn which is easily explained because of the fact that there's a lot of geopolitical issues i always explained to you and i always warned you about that uh between the u.s and china and the u.s saying that hey we might even ban all chinese stocks off of the american stock market which if that happens that in its own outright will be very great for megl why because by default it will have a lot of homeland uh interests uh, out of in, in in the chinese and in the hong kong market now things you need to know guys overall when it's an ipo it first first and foremost the initial investors the private investors that were in the mar in in that stock or that company um uh, that we basically are not because basically they're all people that were there prior to the ipo those people are going to be the people that benefit 100,000 percent because they get premiums that will the premium of it is when the ipo takes its place all their shares get gets converted over to the new price or the price of the ipo the public offering um so if for example to just to bring it down a little bit if I was a private investor in MGL, MEGL back before the IPO, and let's say I paid my shares cost me 50 cent a dollar a share. After the IPO, if the IPO is up four to five bucks as they're evaluating it so far to be, automatically all my shares gets converted over to that price. Now, many insider or private investors from the past would have a lockup period where they can't sell shares for x amount of time period but in most cases like these most most of those private investors what they do is a flip flop they will flip through the shares as the company even if they are bullish on it or all that kind of stuff they will obviously take advantage of the price pump flip buy back flip buy back and you have to remember if unless you know a hundred thousand percent a hundred thousand percent what the company's about and what it does then and, and you know before the ipo obviously the potential of the company then you want to remember that it is 
the craziest thing normally months after a couple months two three months after the ipo sometimes even less those ipos most of them almost about 80 90 percent of them take a steep drop in price before it continues its growth so you got to remember many companies do it just so they could have access to cash so they could pay off bills which is very bad for investors and some do it so they can get bigger and also have more and more and more capital to continue going their financials look great you will read them in the description however some one one of those things which is the growth year over year is dropping for them it's kind of understandable because of the things that we're going in uh, the events that we're going in the markets that we're in in this in this year so with that being said guys please read the the the, the information in the description below and make your comments i'm going to be watching the pantheon's uh, interview with diane garrett so hopefully i'll also catch you there it's premiering already at four uh just about the same time as i'm making this video so besides all this much love guys and be safe and i'll be there for you i'll be posting all this stuff also in our discord so i'll meet you guys there much love ab investments